How sustainable is alcohol consumption? In this short video, we will investigate the frequently overlooked factors associated with binge drinking and how mass alcohol consumption impacts the environment around us. We already have a fairly good idea of what alcohol can do to us. A euphoric sense of confidence, then followed by a loss of control over bodily functions, followed by a bad headache the next morning. And in some cases, it can even get us a criminal record. But what does it do to the environment? Wine for mine. According to a recent study by UCL, a person aged between 16 to 24 drinks an average of more than 16 units of alcohol on a typical night out or four times the recommended daily allowance. Nowadays, alcoholic drinks are 45% more affordable than they were in 1980. Health-wise, there is the risk of contracting liver disease, high blood pressure and the weakening of the heart muscles, and yearly this translates to £3.5 billion of the NHS budget. All this usage of booze makes alcohol consumption a formidable enemy to sustainability. According to a recent study, a 750 milliliter bottle of liquor produces on average 6.3 pounds of CO2. That's more than six giant exercise balls full of carbon dioxide for every bottle of whiskey, rum, vodka, gin or tequila that you consume. Beer accounts for 37% of all alcohols sold in the UK, the largest percentage, followed by wine at 34% and spirits at 22%. The carbon footprint of a bottle of beer encompasses greenhouse gas emissions from a large number of areas. These areas include cultivation, raw material processing, beverage production, packaging, transportation and lastly usage and disposal by the consumer. Let's take a bottle of Bud for example. Producing your average bottle of Bud will require 11 different materials from local and international sources. For the packaging, plastics, adhesives, wood, cardboard, paper, steel and glass. And for the beverage, carbon dioxide, malt, barley, hops, yeast and most importantly, water. The main culprit to greenhouse gas emissions in the manufacturing of packaging is glass. And even though Budweiser glass is locally sourced, the making of glass itself releases enough CO2 to dwarf the amount released during transportation, even if they were sourced further away. Moreover, the UK buys in around 1.2 billion bottles a year, generating CO2 emissions during transportation and contributing to more than 630,000 tonnes of glass to the UK waste stream, around 40% of which is disposed of as household waste. Then there's the huge waste of water. A rule of thumb is that breweries use 5 to 10 times more water than actually leaves the premises as beer. A decent proportion of this is simply cooling water and the rest is grey cleaning water with a high biological oxygen demand and some pretty nasty cleaning chemicals are mixed in too. It is also alarming that 100 litres is used per bottle of beer. Whilst that's obviously a lot, wine uses even more at 270 litres per bottle. But don't blame it all on the manufacturers, because their emissions account for only 53% of the total. The other 47% comes from you, the consumer, the vast majority of which comes from the energy for the refrigeration of your alcohol. All in all, the total CO2 emissions of a six-pack of beer are 3,189 grams, or 532 grams per bottle. Shocking, isn't it? So far, it seems our little Budweiser isn't looking that green. There is, however, a more eco-friendly alternative. Although aluminium production can be an environmental disaster, canned beer beats bottles handily on a carbon front. Shipping cans rather than bottles results in 30% fewer emissions. Additionally, cans are recycled at significantly higher rates. Whilst substances like beer, wine and whiskies can be locally bought and sourced, there are some that can never be green in terms of transportation. Your tequila, for example, is never going to be locally sourced. International law requires that anything calling itself tequila be produced in certain areas of Mexico, primarily near a city called, wait for it, tequila. Whiskey producers also find it easy to source their grain locally. 
Maker's Mark, for example, sources all of its grains from a 30 mile radius. When used properly, alcohol can be benign and even beneficial. Although many alcohol manufacturers have recently taken big steps in reducing their environmental impact, there are undeniable costs associated with the production of the ingredients and the packaging. So what can you do for better sustainability? Number 1. Buy cans over bottled alcoholic drinks. Number 2. Buy less imported drinks and support your local brewer. Number 3. Recycle your alcoholic waste. But most importantly, remember to drink responsibly. Not like this guy. How sustainable is alcohol? Alcohol is exactly sustainable as your mom. Alright? Alcohol is sustainable as your mom. And your mom is sustainable every single.